Hello everybody and welcome back to Dragon Age the Veil Guard where my lighting is consistently terrible. I keep messing with the mirrors and lights and it's just not great. <laughs> so ah, I decided to just not worry about it um, too much. Uh, and while there is some light coming in through the window, it's uh, it's working out just fine. Anyway, um, I want to... So I was looking at the journal again, right? And I was like, ooh, gate of faded glories, out of the forest to unseal a path, right, in the crossroads. Uh, and I tried to click on it and track it on the map, would not show up. It says, And it says, unseal the path, it, this area will unlock later, right? So that's all of them are, do, are, are um, this area will unlock later type things, except for the Treviso one. Um, so I don't know, I'm maybe gonna go look, but first we're gonna go drop off the gift for Lucanus. Uh, it felt a little weird to hit, to like, you know, just give it to him right after going to his mission. And so I was like, I'll hold on to it for a second. But also it's like one of those things where it's like, maybe it's a little weird to just like hold on to it and like a week later be like, hey, I got this and thought of you, you know what I mean? <laughs> so we are going to just straight travel to the fate to the lighthouse. Just yeah. to the lighthouse itself is not a big deal, I think. It is nice to wander the crossroads, though. That's right. We can upgrade that too, and we'll check in with people and see. Let's see if. I want to see if Varric has anything to say. This house sounds spooky. I'm not going to lie. Oh, and I can put my tapestry up. I'm going to do that. Does it feel like this place is Solus's revenge? We spoiled his <laughs> ritual and now we have to house sit for him. <laughs> we did stick Varric in a room with no windows. This is, this is like a little prison cell more than anything. That's what it feels like. That yeah, we have to house sit for him. I'm sure he wouldn't see it that way. He's like, oh, yes, this is me being benevolent. Varric is like, why are we stuck doing this? <laughs> oh, so it's separate. Oh, okay. Sure. But it doesn't turn it green or anything. Like, I'm not quite sure I understand the upgrade versus the, like, when you buy another armor that's exactly the same as the first or whatever, then you, like, you get uh, upgrades on that too. I'm gonna have to look into it more. Hmm. People have things to say though. Oh, a timed thing. I guess we do, we should check in with her after everything. A sharp eye, a quick mind, and luck. That's most of the job. So, do you think I could become one? An investigator? It takes a certain amount of focus, too. Mm. Oh, okay, well, mm. maybe not then. I still can't believe it. I'm talking to the Nev Gallus. And that's sweet, but I don't need the flattery. Right, just a person I'll try to remember. Brooke, here to join us. I'm glad to see you're making friends, Ballara. Oh, definitely. Nev's, well, Nev, she's been just so kind. <laughs> it turns out Ballara knows my work. I was gonna say. Or at least the parts that make the papers. It all sounds so exciting. The things you've done, the people you've helped. Those are the ones that go well. You don't hear about the rest. Everyone wants a scandal or a happy ending. It's true. Or both, like the time you told the Marquis to- Hold on. Nah. I don't think Rook's interested in that story. I do love a scandal. Um, they're usually, they're actually doing better at like the interrupts like that. Like a lot of times in games, and especially in Bioware games, at least, you know, because I've played a bunch, um, like you can see where there's going to be in like the, the, was it the subtitles that there's going to be an interrupt of some sort because it'll be like you'll like have a dash or something or the con the sentence will stop abruptly and then usually there's kind of like the usually there's like kind of a weird pause where it's like like the person stops talking and then the next person starts talking but that went that went very close together rook's a little <laughs> look i'd love to honest but that story needs the right atmosphere 
After dark over bad coffee. Or expensive wine. Take your pick. Speaking of, what's the situation with cooking <clears throat> exactly? Are we on a rotation or what? I can help out. I'm a pretty good cook. With some things at least. Well, most of the time. Sometimes I get distracted and things burn. I could just leave. That's terrible. Um... There's no official rotation. Everyone just makes extra food when they get hungry. Do you mostly cook Dalish foods? I haven't had a chance to try many. Sometimes. Not a lot of options when you're out in the forest. But I've learned a lot of different cooking styles. And tea, Interesting. Ravani. Oh, I even learned how to make Tevinter Kachapuri. Wait, real Kachapuri? The hollowed out bread? Three kinds of cheese? I love Kachapuri. Mm -hmm. What about you, Rook? What are you craving? Ooh, this is so fun, that little conversation. Um, probably Dalish food. I would think some of the areas we've been in have like really rich foods, and Dalish food would be like more forage type food in general, which is like light and filling at the same time, you know, at least like the forage food I know of, right? Um, and there's actually quite a bit of variety, it just takes a lot more work, you know? Uh, but it's funny because I feel like uh, was Lucanus is over there in the kitchen, like slaving away, whatever. He's not like practicing murder. And it's like, we're like, yeah, it's casual. And he's the one like keeping us fed, apparently. Oh, uh, wild meat and mushrooms sounds pretty good. <laughs> really? M maybe I'll make some. Lots of herbs out in Arlathan. Just don't pick the glowing Eat ones. Arlathan food. You should have an assistant. Someone to make sure it doesn't burn. See if it tastes right. That sort of thing. Nev Gallus helping me cook? <laughs> Again, the flattery. Right, just a person. Got They've it. They've apparently already right. had this conversation. Now, let's see what we can scrounge up. Or Nev is like, please no, I'm not, I'm not about it for the fame, you know? Magical cooking. On the back of a recipe card in Bellara's handwriting, no obvious fuel source for the stove. Oven uses wood, which makes sense, but how does the stove work? Faint traces of magic when we cook. Veil fire? How would that even work? I'm making sure everything is working over on my computer. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Theory, stove is drawing from the ambient magical energy and converting it into heat. Is this a constant process? What happens to the excess? Magic finite resource? Could we ever actually run out of it? Fate is incredibly vast, but it has to have an edge, right? Ask me to try the same meal cook cooked on stove, magic, and on my portable camp stove, wood. Blind taste test suggests no difference in flavor. Surprising. Further experiments necessary. This is cute. Ballara and Nev getting along. I, w I do think they might, they, they'll need to be friends with Lucanus, because he's kind of taken over the kitchen. You know what I mean? What are these? A meditation on grief. They say grief is like a knife, sharp, painful, immediate, but grief isn't a knife. It's a stone. Choked down and kept down. It erodes. Time makes it smaller, lesser. You forget about it. It passes into memory. Where you used to feel pain, now you feel nothing. But sometimes it turns. A note, a flower, a smell. The smoothly worn edges retreat, twist away. What comes now is as sharp and jagged as ever. It cuts anew. It's worn anew. And then it happens again. And unlike a stone, there was always another jagged edge. That's really good. Honestly. And very, I think, appropriate, yeah. Whereas, like, I was thinking, like, a jagged stone that you, like, swallow down, and you're holding it inside, and it cuts you up for a long, long time, and eventually it wears down. But, yeah, every now and then it just takes, like, a like a song or a thought or, or a moment or something, you know? And then all of a sudden it just jabs you again. Yeah, it's like, oh, a, a new edge. So, yeah, that does feel very... At least for me. Sounds very accurate. Letter from Ireland to Ballara. Ballara, it was good to see you. Felt a little bit like old times, you know? Just going out there and doing the work instead of worrying about everything else that's happening right now. I know things are a little weird, and I know that some of this isn't really my business to say, even when we were together, but I'm going to say it. You have to stop beating yourself up over what happened with Siren. I know you think you're the person who can fix anything, but you can't. No one can. You're a friend, Ballara, and I still care about you, so give yourself a break. Ireland. I like, too, that they've had, like, people obviously have had pa pasts. Like, Lucanus has, like, obviously kissed a lot of people. You know what I mean? Like, like, according to the conversation we had. Or at least kissed, you know, had experience kissing and being in 
relationships where he could be poetic about it, you know? Ballara just got out of, well, just, but, like, you know, got out of a relationship with Irwin. Like, I don't know, it's just nice to know that people have had past some relationships and they weren't just a blank slate till you showed up, you know what I mean? Let's see what everybody else has to say. I'm kind of worried. I hope, like, I didn't come, I think I didn't come in after... After a Lucanus mission or something? Maybe I should come in more frequently. I, just, I was like, oh, I shouldn't, like, overdo it. But I'm like... Now I'm like, I'll probably just, I'll probably just come in and check periodically. <laughs> you know? Oh, God. What's... He's... There's an exclamation point in the pantry. <laughs> I just can't get over it. It's so funny to me that he's in the pantry. Rook, do you have a... You meal? don't even have a window. Of course. Something wrong? Dea wants to meet. Well, that doesn't sound like a bad thing. She wants to plan Katerina's funeral. Mm. Oh, right. If you don't mind, I could use some backup. In case Spike gets out of hand. Let's not keep Taya waiting. Oh, we're just gonna go right now. I mean, I was also gonna give him a teapot, which does feel weird. Oh, okay. I was like, I was gonna give him a teapot. Uh, here's a teapot. <laughs> I... Even though you like coffee, here's a teapot. For me? That's it? That's it? Look at that. That's a bad smile. I don't like that at all. Ooh, just the, just the teeth. Uh, that's a good smile. That's a good smile. I like, I like the, like, crags in his face. I think it look, makes him look very austere. But, like, I'm trying to look at this teapot, too. And, like... Is it like an Antivan teapot? Like, is that what it is? I didn't... It's got, like, crow on there, maybe? I did a good job. I'm like, oh, yeah, let's go plan the funeral. Also, here's a teapot. I don't... Like, why would you get a teapot for somebody who likes coffee? <laughs> who, like, you know, seems to, like, almost cry every time they get a good cup of coffee. Haha, -ha, so let's we put a, we put a teapot... In your house. You probably don't like it. Uh, do you have that little plant that he got you? Hmm, he probably just has it for the, um... For the spearmint to use in the kitchen. Alright. You've been quiet? I know. Just thinking. But I said we'd talk, didn't I? I, I heard a voice after we saved That's that That's right, man, I forgot to talk to her about that. It told me I was touched by the ancients and that I should seek it out. Seek her out. And that's, I, I heard it, so it's one of those things where I'm like, oh yeah, and then it's like, oh, whoops. Ah, uh, okay, I'm gonna, yep. Uh-huh. Now you know what it's like to have a voice in your head. <laughs> you know, I don't care for it. Yeah. What if she's like me? Maybe that's why only I heard her. She said to look to those closest to the stone to locate her. The dead. Meaning? The dead. The children of the stone. Dead. The dwarves. Not surfacers like me, but the ones from the deep roads. Almost ten years ago, a shaper from Orzammar bonded with a titan. Are we going to meet her? Titans. Ancients. You think it's related? It would make sense, wouldn't it? Volta. That was the shaper's name. Maybe there are more like her down there. Oh, okay, so we're not gonna meet a character from the DLC. We're gonna meet somebody entirely new. Hmm. Or you could be the only dwarf in the world with magic. Which must feel nice. A little. But I don't know everything about it. Yet. And I probably should. Being unique is scary. I know some people in Orzammar. I'll reach out. Like, especially... If I hear anything, you'll be the first to know. Especially if it's something where it's like, I need to be taught. You know what I mean? Like, I wish to be taught something about this new thing that I have. And then it's like, you're the only one. And you're like, ah, you know, it's a bad thing. You don't like that. Not bad, just... Where... Oh, okay. I was like, where is she? I see her icon, but... Why is yours? Yours is the saddest room. What can I do to change this? You only have dead plants, and there's li there's a bunch of living plants out here. Like, it looks much better already. Wow. 
Why are we playing sad violin music? Uh, wait. I should have checked the map to see if people like lit up. Nev's was not lit up, so I did look there. And you were fine. I need to put my tapestry up. I need to put my tapestry away. Ooh. This is such a cool thing to walk into, honestly. Like this looks very serious, and I think it's supposed to be more it's supposed to be more casual because you got like couches and like soft squishy chairs. But it's still the coloring feels very serious. <laughs> Tapestry, ba ba ba. I do have a cool thing there. Decoration mode. Let me decorate. I think I just like pick up things too. Like this? I don't think I bought that. Ooh, see, this is the kind of thing I actually love to have like artwork of is like is is uh like i was saying like, like the botanical drawings that they used to have like this like in the 1800s right where it's like oh or even animal ones but i prefer like the geology and the uh the botanical ones and they're so cool they are so neat do i have yes let's do that the antiven coffee maker reminds me of um what is it like the, the gnomish coffee maker in bookshops and bone dust what's the first one that was the prequel one um i can't remember the prequel legends and lattes there we go yep yep where it's like ooh, it's a strange oh i get to have another okay that's cool i'll put a crow up i'm gonna cry every time i look at the inquisitor one the inquisition oh Oh, I'm wearing this one. Mm, I didn't know I had a circlet. I love circlets. I think this is one of the deluxe things. Yeah. Wearing a circlet. Heck yeah. Ooh, that one does look cool. <gasps> That's right! I got the crow casual! Oh my gosh, finally! The crow and the... Um, Lords of Fortune were my favorite, and I I actively wanted those very badly. Ooh, I did get this too. I think I look better in like autumnal colors though, or like golds and greens. Oh, this one. Um. Yes, let, but do let me change into this. Yes, and you can see some of my arm paint now. Whoa. The blue looks good on me. Like a shiny, satiny blue. Big fan, big fan, big fan. Woo! Just wait till I get a hold of the Lords of Fortune one. Oh, yes, the companion quest. Well, we are going back to Treviso anyway for the Gate of Sorrows. We can defeat, you know... Uh evil champion while also planning a funeral as much as as much as i like um Ned and lucanus i think i want to see what the dialogue is between Bellara and lucanus it seems like the crossroads has more dialogue too opportunities they were very chatty anyway initially Like the just anybody I brought here, it seemed like they, it's, I think it seemed like they talked more here than anywhere else. Or were they chatting a lot? No, they were chatting a lot in Treviso. Never mind. Let me go to Navarra. Let me go back home to my people. To other shores. I want to check in with my fam, and I want to acquire Emric. And uh, I want to just see how the dead are doing, and I want to fight a giant skeleton. <laughs> it's just the Morn Watch was just for me from the start, and I didn't know it, you know. The Venatori were growing demons and people. That's what was happening in the ossuary. Zara was trying to get growing? certain types of demons. Some are harder to summon than others, I guess. They were waiting for spite to break out of my body, like I was a cocoon for a moth. I mean. 
I'm glad he didn't, but why didn't he? We made a deal. Oh. That's it? That's all you're gonna give me? Um, actually, oh, dang. Um, I don't know if I can do it in here. Yes. Um. We can keep this one on for conversations. Um. Okay. Because, yeah, we didn't really talk about what was going on in there. And... It's a, apparently, gro like, not just, like, oh, trying to make abominations, but trying to grow a specific kind of demon. That reminds me of the Red Lyrium experience, where the choice demon, as he called himself, or he's a, he was a desire demon. But as we're learning, there's, you know, there's there's greater variation within spirits and demons than we're, we, we were given to believe. Zara's not incorrect about that. It kind of is broached a little bit in Inquisition that, like, there are like Solus is technically his name. Solus is means pride in Elven. Um. So yeah, so we we've, we've kind of thought he's been a pride demon for a while, but he's but we kind of thought there was like a variation there, or that he was a wisdom demon turned to pride or something like that. But there's there's obviously great variation within all emotions, like emotional states, right? Um, but. I don't even know where I was going with that. Um, but yeah, growing demons in people and then not using them as abominations but actually just wanting demons where the red lyrium was like implanted in the Templars when they imbibed it, like when they imbued it or whatever and I think it imbibed technically they drank it. Um, and then there's faces on my knees. I don't like that at all. I do not like having face decaps. <laughs> I don't like Is that though? Okay, I was looking at below. I'm like, is that a wolf? That might be a wolf iconography on my shins. But, you know, at least this outfit doesn't have toe boots. <laughs> we have got that going for us. But, distracted again. But, yeah, the red lyrium would grow in Templars. And then you could harvest it because they'd, they'd stop eventually. They'd, they'd die. And, like, it would keep growing out of them like a pestilence. Um, so, like, like, you were scattering seeds all over the world. For red lyrium to grow inside people and then outside of people <laughs> um but yeah i don't i remember with the seekers like it's a pretty big lore dump that happens there. that's where you find out that the seekers are actually possessed technically by spirits of faith um which even they didn't know that but i can't quite remember all the details and they keep saying cult like it's something else and not the other venatory, like, branch. You know what I mean? I don't know. It was the venatory causing us trouble. I do like the way the Alleviants fade in and out. There's just always a weirdly abruptly cut off uh, thing of crows every time we come out of there. Just to remind us, you know. You're in the. Ooh, that's a cool statue. A hooded crow. See, this is. I wanted new stuff like this. Hey. Are you still wanting to die? You should talk to some of the other occupation survivors. Yeah. You sound like air. Take time. Feel the loss how you need. I wish I were a full fledged crow. I'm just. Trapped here, doing nothing. I mean, you just get yourself killed. For whatever it's worth, I'm sorry about your cousin, Darith. At least you completed his contract. Thanks for that. If the Anton hadn't... I mean, you knew. Why aren't we at war? What's it take to know we have to kill them all? There's a subtlety to being an assassin, even if you don't think there is. You're not a full-fledged army. What are you gonna do? Send 20 crows after a fully trained and slightly brainwashed fanatical army? You know what I mean? Like, I get it, he's a kid and short-sighted, but like his prefrontal cortex isn't fully developed, but like still. I'll buy this and I'll buy this for him. Like, I have a bunch of money, and this stuff isn't crazy expensive, you know? A revival charge. But he already has that? He already has a revival charge. But it would upgrade what he has? Sure. 
I didn't know he had a revival charge already. Oh, it is not. Mm -mm, don't like that. The name is cool. Ooh, I like this one even more. It's a little less bulky. I like it. Inadvertently, he's the one who has the most stuff. Like, I did not do that on purpose. Like, but I think his stuff is the most well set up. But this guy is, like, right on my way. And I always have to come in here and walk past him. I wish I had cool stuff. Should we? Yeah, let's do this now since we're here. Barely returned from his imprisonment. We have to arrange a funeral. Wow, we're going to do a lot of sad things. Ballara. I need a funeral with Lucanas. Good, you're here. Thank I'm... you for making the arrangements, Dea. Don't trust him. For Caterina? How could I do otherwise? I'm so sorry, Lucanis. This must be such a blow. Rook, thank you for coming with him. I need Juan de la Muerte to plan this. His cousin has been no help at all. I'm sorry, Dea. This is just... Too much right now. Yeah, okay. Useless. Utterly useless. Um Connors wouldn't come alone. Um I do think it's like maybe like an emotional support thing too, where he's like I, it is probably a lot for strife. Like he needs to know that um somebody will take him out, I guess, who's capable of taking him out is so it's a it's a vote of confidence, kind of, you know. Um I'm gonna take a picture of the cat right now and see if you guys can see him. Maybe I'll post it. He's really enjoying sitting in front of the mirror that I have on the bed that I'm not even using right now with the lighting. What do you need us to do? There's a lot to plan. I did not think that would but happen. First, I need the ashes. Ashes? Make it help us. Yes, the ashes. Katerina's ashes. From the cremation? Oh, yes. Of course. I'll get them to you right away. Hilario. What happened? What do you mean? Katerina? How? How did the Venatori get to her? When? Where? In the estate? In the city? How did they get past our people? What did they use? Poison? Blades? I need to know. Cousin, stop. You can't dwell on this. It'll drive you mad. He's obviously evil! I'm not dwelling. Zara killed the first Talon. I have to know how if I'm going to stop her. I told you, I'm handling it. Boys, enough of this. We have other things to discuss. My apologies, Andradea. Continue without me. I'll get you the ashes. So she's either not dead. Has Taya seen? Good, I can act. Okay. Um, like, has anybody seen her body? You know, like I assume Taya has if she knows that there was a cremation. I assume some people, somebody had to oversee the cremation, you know. But like, have we seen her body? And like, why? Like, also, like, doesn't wouldn't Taya know? I feel like the upper echelon of crows would know exactly how she died. If Lucanus is keeping this knowledge under wraps and like nobody else knows, that's gotta like that's gotta set them off, you know. Also, he's dressed like a complete dandy. He's dressed. I can do this now because I can't have paint on my face. He's dressed like a fop. Like he's dressed like a wannabe Elvis impersonator. You know what I mean? From like the fifties, you know, with the slick back sides. I say as somebody who really enjoys having shaved sides, but like you know what I mean? Like the pompadour kind of a look. You know, I don't trust people like that. Something's going on with him. I don't know what. Thank you! When he's not on the job, my cousin always has his head in the clouds. Hilario can be a handful. But this? The only time I've seen him like this was when Lucanis died. You're worrying, aren't you? What will people say if they hear the demon of Virantium has a big, soft heart? <laughs> he's been careless at times, but never when his own life was on the line. His life's not on the Zara line! down the first talent. Anyone could be next, and my cousin doesn't want to think about it? You have a point. It's not like Hilario to ignore a knife coming at him. What do you need from me for the funeral? Come, I'll get us some drinks and we can make the arrangements. It's because he's not actually in danger. Like, we know, everybody knows that we're supposed to be looking for an inside traitor. Our house owes you for handling all of this. Katerina was family. Can you imagine what she'd say if she saw us all like this? 
She'd be furious, especially at Ilario, as usual. I barely know your cousin, and he already seems like trouble to me. Oh, he is. I've lost count at the times I've had to pull him out of the fire on the job. He's a good assassin. Most jobs don't have as many fires as yours do. I'll have my people keep an eye on him for you. Thank you, Taya. Go on. I'll let you know if something comes up. I want to know how everybody's related here. Like, where's the family tree? She's obviously not, I mean, they're not blood related, the two cousins with Katarina, but they're like adopted. But like, she's not adopted, the, the Taya is not adopted. Um, and the other guy, Viago, he's freaking uh, like the son of the king. I, I think. The puppet king, but you know. Um, and those two seem together, potentially. Viago and Tia, like. I just, I'm like, mmm. And like, I don't know, Bioware, I feel like if, I'm almost at the point where it's so heavy handed that I'm like, oh, maybe it's not Alario. Maybe it's actually somebody else. You know what I mean? Because this is just way too obvious if, if it is. Like, I, I will be disappointed, honestly, if Alario is not, or if Alario is the traitor, because it's being so obvious. And I get it, it's like, oh, it's family, there's a blind spot, it's always how it goes, you know? But at the same, like, for these guys. But at the same time, I'm just like, come on, like, you guys are crows, like, this is, you're, you're supposed to, like, be watching for a knife in the back all the time, you know, like, even a little bit, so I'm just like, I, 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 I the games, as always. Thank you for handling it. And everything. Yeah, apparently she's handling everything, apparently nobody's doing anything except for, ta of course, of course, just the one woman is obviously handling everything. We worry about Jacobus. His future seems so dark. Well, he is an assassin. There's comfort to be found in the dark. Shut up. <laughs> Could be hard to find without someone to guide you. Mm. And we must ensure there are crows alive to guide him. Well, it sure seems like you guys aren't doing anything. He's just brooding over in the corner. He's turning in a knifey shift dark as we speak. Are there many crows like Jacobus? We have many fledglings, but he is something of a prodigy. They tend to do very well, or... Very badly. Yeah. Not all things end with clarity, as you and I both know. Fine. Endings are fuzzy. Starts are shocking. Middles... Middles are worth lingering. Oh? The Cantori Diamond is your casino. The occupation hasn't closed your business? Business may be down, but it isn't my casino to close. An easy mistake to make. Isn't that right, Andaratea Cantori? I am no landlord, and anyone who treats me as such shall be evicted. <laughs> and anyone who treats me like a landlord, I will evict. So you two are both talons. Doesn't that make you rivals? Rank in one area is rarely applicable to others, which is to say only a fool would try to impose rank on Thea. Wise words from a sometimes fool. Mm. A history I would wish on no one else, lest they take it from me. Oh, Rook. Okay, I just wanted to get the the deets, to get the tea. I guess maybe I should keep clicking on this kid and see how he does. Taya and Viago told me what you found, that someone in Treviso sold us out to the butcher and let in the Anton. The Talons won't let this betrayal stand. If I found out whoever it was, I'd make them so sorry. You're a child. You're just dead. You're just a child. You are, like, you're probably, like, I don't know, 14 to 17. Like, and you are going to rush in like a warrior who has a bunch of armor and, you know, spiritual assistance potentially. But, like, you are a crow with some little paintballs to throw at walls and a dagger in the dark. You know what I mean? I just want to be alone. You're going to get yourself killed. You are being unreasonable. Thank you for saving Jakobus. I hope I can help him save himself. He this is, is at a dangerous point in his training. If he is not careful, he risks becoming merely a killer. Yeah, without any... How is Jakobus? Like many who have lost family, he seeks to fill the hole with the blood of others. Banger. This hole has no bottom, however. Climbing down is not the way out. I've not said that to him, though. Platitudes are not the comfort he needs or desires. 
Dang, uh, that was actually deep. It's like it's you you seek to fill the the hole in your heart with blood of others, like the blood of people who hurt you. But it's a bottomless hole, and you will never be satisfied. Have you many students? I'm watching a number of youth. Some don't know they are students yet. That sounds strange. Would you prefer I wait until they decide they want to kill? That point is too late. Mm. Not everyone is a Jakobus with the benefit of a rook. Interesting. So they are keeping an eye on promising children in the streets and then putting them into a life of crime. I tried to talk to all the fledglings, you included. Sorry, I'm new at this. Not just a throwing marks. Uh, okay, well, let's go. Hang on. I require big arm strength for this. I'm curious if I should check the map first and see if I even can do this. We'll see. This one gets me every time. I have to assassin's creed across the so rooftops. So I we're on a rotation for cooking? Yeah. It's supposed to be, and used to be, but, well... What is it? Well, some of it's an acquired taste. So I tend to do most of the cooking a lot of the time. So like, you don't like how everybody cooks? Is that what she's saying? I can't see Nev. Nev seems like a pizza and like takeout kind of gal. Um, Harding will just I, I can see Harding just not eating or like eating whatever's around. You know what I mean? Like absentmindedly like doing other things and just like eating jerky and like trail rations. Um, Rook will eat anything. I'm gonna say that. I, I think Rook. My Rook is a is a is a was a garbage disposal. She's garbage disposal. I've decided just now. Um, and what is it? Varric. Varric likes stuff from Kirkwall, obviously. Probably seafood. And yeah, Lucanus probably has really fancy taste, honestly. Oh yeah! Oh yeah, these people! Oh, I meant to hit it back. End it now. Gosh dang. He didn't. Remember to hit my shield back. All right, well. We have a, an orb over there that we need to take care of, also. Okay. Get ready. Rose! Bloodbound to Eldorman. Resistance to necrosis! Oh no. Wow, that's not cool at all. I'm not really sure what I'm doing. This feels a little bit like the the fight with um what's his name? The air shock, you know. Okay, well, geez louise, that fight was incredibly difficult. I spent like 20 minutes in there and I got it, I got its main, like its armor health down and then like an eighth, maybe like a fifth of the health bar down. 
That's crazy. I probably should not bring Lucanus, honestly, on that because necrotic energy is not helpful. I don't remember what it was weak to, but yeah, that was bad. It did not go well. Or maybe we just aren't leveled up enough, but Lucanus is probably my most powerful person right, right now. Um, yeah. Anyway, that was wild. So, um... Not sure how long this episode will be. It might be kind of short if I edit all that out. So, uh, but I'll go ahead and call it here. So thank you all for watching. I appreciate it. Really quick, I do want to go say thank you to my patrons. Actually, as promised before in the last video, we're going to do codex entries really quick before I say thank you to Patreon. So queue up two codex entries. Navara, woo! Oh, we already read this one. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. From Brother Jenna TV. Yep, yep, yep. We read this one. The Orlesian Empire. There are many lords and ladies in Val Royale, and I mean this literally. Once the system of noble titles in Orle was labyrinthine. There were barons and baroness and baronets and sir barons and a horde of others, each with its own origins and its own nuances of comparison. The Orlesian aristocracy is ancient and much given to a competition. All the nobility play the grand game, as it is known, whether they wish to or not. It is a game of reputation and patronage, where moves are made with rumors and scandal is the chief weapon. No gentle game, this. More blood has been drawn as a result of the grand game than any war the illusions have fought of this i am assured by almost every gentleman here yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> i'm sure it is as far as titles went Everything changed with the coming of Emperor Dracon, who established the Elysian Empire as it exists now and who created the Chantry. There is no more venerated figure in Orle. In Val Royo, the statue of Dracon stands as tall as the statue of Andraste. Dracon is determined that the grand game was tearing Orle apart, and so he abolished all titles beside his own and lord and lady. Hmm. Emperor Dracon was also the, also the one who instigated the first Inquisition, which was more brutal than the one we ran. Um in order to solidify his reign. And he is represented by a dragon, now that I think about it, with Dra and Dra Emperor Dracon, very draconic sounding name too. And uh, I don't know if they'll pull this out in this game at all, or if it's still canon at all, but technically the Ferelden rulers too actually have dragon blood. Um, the, the man, the Callahan, who started the line of Ferelden rulers, um, according to one of the comics, he made a, like a deal with a dragon or something to like imbue its blood and like gain its powers somehow. He seemed like a real big dick, honestly. Um, not a very nice person. Um, but that's why theoretically there's dragon blood within the, uh, the line of his pre, or not predecessors, his, um, progeny. Um, I don't know if they'll bring that back up, but, or if they're just kind of like leaving it in the wings, you know? Um, interesting though to think about it that apparently both ruling lines of the southern big southern Thetis countries uh, potentially have dragon associations I am told with some twittering amusement that this action did not end the grand game as Dracon has intended now the lords and ladies collected unofficial titles rather than official ones such as the exalted patron of Tassus Clay or uncle to the champion of Dreams. it is a headache to remember such titles and one winces to think of the poor doorman at the balls who must rattle them off as each guest enters the room the aristocracy is different from Ferelden in other ways as well the Orlesians' might right to rule stems directly from the Maker. There exists neither the concept of rule by merit nor the slightest notion of rebellion. If one is not noble, one aspires to be, or at least aspires to be in the good graces of a noble and is ever watching for a way to enter the patronage of those better placed in the grand game. And then there are the masks and the cosmetics. I have not seen so much paint since the kennels at high ever, but that is another story. From Beyond the Frostbacks by Ban Tarek of West Hill. In the Dragon Age! Well, oh my gosh, that's us. <laughs> Yeah, in Ferelden, you can gain nobility. Um, in Origins, uh, Loghain, he was not he was born a commoner, but because he did so well in the war to reclaim Ferelden and was friends with the with the prince who then became king of Ferelden, um, after they got it back from Orle, who had you know come in and taken over, um, he became a ban, which is like the highest like lord in um Ferelden and they have bands for each region and there's like lower lords within that region but then there's like the king or queen of Ferelden at the top um surface dwarves and Orzammar 
Dwarven society is divided into rigid castes with houses that compete for power and prestige, but all that is discarded when a dwarf abandons the stone for the surface. Under the open sky, everyone is equal, or so the story goes. It is not the, it is not the case. The truth is that thousands of years of tradition are not so easily tossed aside. Even though surface dwarves are officially stripped of their caste, many maintain a hierarchy among themselves along the old caste lines. Formerly noble houses are accorded more respect than casteless brands who come up in search of opportunity. The poorest noble dwarf on the surface looks upon the rich lower caste dwarves with contempt. Upper-class dwarf society is roughly divided into two camps, Kalnas, who insist on maintaining caste and rank, typically those from the noble or merchant caste families, and descendants, who believe in leaving Orzammar's traditions underground and embracing life in the sunlit world. Maintaining some tie to Orzammar was seen for generations as the only lifeline for surface dwarves. Bringing surface goods to their kin underground and lyrium and metals to the surface was not only the most lucrative means of making a living, but also a sort of sacred duty, as many surface dwarves willingly accepted exile and the loss of their caste to better serve their house or patron. In recent years, many surface dwarves, particularly ascendants, have branched out. They started banks, mercenary companies, and overland trade caravans. They became investors and speculators in purely surface trade. These new industries have proven tremendous sources of wealth, but are looked down upon by their more conservative Kim. For less affluent surface dwarves, association with a powerful Kalna can open many doors. They can get credit with dwarven merchants and are offered work opportunities by the powerful dwarven merchants guild more readily, sometimes, and more qualified but less connected individuals. From the Dowager's Field Guide to Good Society by Lady Alcyon. Um, yeah, they are not a merit. They're not a meritocracy. M most of the dwarven stuff, it's very, uh, who you are and who you know. All right, really quick, I want to say thank you to my patrons, to all my patrons, including my Acorn Tier patrons. Thank you so much, Fane, for your support. I very much appreciate it. And I want to give an extra special shout out to my Sapling Tier patrons, Reese Galito, thank you so much, and Sebastian James, thank you so much. I appreciate your guys' support. Uh, and I want to give an extra super special shout out to my Forest Tier patrons who have gone above and beyond in their support of me and the channel and who I truly, honestly cannot thank enough. So thank you, Christopher, so much for your support. And thank you so much, Nightshade, for your support. I appreciate you both very much. And thank you all again for watching. And I hope to see you in the next one.